Hello, welcome to the road to Tokyo. I'm Tracy Holmes coming to you from the Japanese capital. Tonight we talk to the four-time Olympian and flag bearer for Australia, Kate Campbell, about her incredible career and maybe what's next. We catch up with Australia's newest track star. Plus we hear from the inspirational weightlifter Laurel Hubbard about how she sees her place in history. The organisers of these games wanted to attract a younger and a whole new audience to the Olympics. The introduction of four new sports has done precisely that, especially the sport of skateboarding, with some of the youngest competitors and youngest medal winners in games history. 18-year-old Australian Keegan Palmer won gold in the first men's park skateboarding final. Teens dominated the women's competition too. 19-year-old Sakura Yosuzumi from Japan won the gold medal. She was joined on the podium by fellow countrywoman Kokona Hiraki, who is only 12, and 13-year-old Sky Brown from the UK. On the track, it wasn't quite the fairy tale we were all hoping for, but history was made, and there's plenty more to come. Runner Peter Boll was Australia's first Olympic finalist in the 800 metres in 53 years. That makes him the highest placed Australian male in a track event since Darren Clark came fourth in the 400 metres in Seoul, 1988. It's been an incredibly successful Olympics for Bowl, who has set two Australian records in the past week. My mum did call me and said, um, there's a saying she's in, in Arabic, because we speak Arabic, she said, you've lifted the community's heads up. Um, and then my dad said, no, I think you lifted the nation's head up. And, um, and I really felt that. Uh, because it's it's just been support from every single person and and it's just it's just been unreal over the last three days and and I I didn't take it as any pressure leading into the race and I took it really as strength and man I just had a do just people better than me and that day I was not nervous I was not under pressure I was I was on my game doing just better than me and that was that was it and that's why I can be at peace with my race, although the goal was to win, I raced the plan, I executed my race. Um, those guys were better on the day. Swimmer Kate Campbell has been a mainstay of the Australian Olympic team since making her debut in Beijing 2008. Such is her commitment to her sport, Campbell stayed behind in Tokyo to participate in the IOC Athletes Commission election. Unfortunately, she just missed out this time around, so she's taking her time to consider what's next. I caught up with Kate in a noisy car park outside the athlete's village. For me, I believe that athletes should be at the heart and soul of, of what goes into creating an Olympic Games and, and athletes' rights should be put forward and, and our voices should be heard. And I've been lucky enough to be a part of the AOC Athletes Commission for the past six years and I've learned so much about what it takes to put together on Olympic Games, uh, the little intricacies that, that go on within sporting organisations and trying to, to bridge the gap between athletes and big sporting bodies. And I think that, you know, compromise needs to be reached on both sides. Uh, it's, it's given me a great appreciation for people who work in sport, uh, but also I think that we need to consistently push athletes agendas and um, if you know if, if I think that something can be done differently uh, I can either complain about it or I can do something about it and doing something about it meant putting up my hand for this role. Do you think that experience that you've had with the AOC Athletes Commission has given you a different appreciation even of this Olympic Games and the experience you've had as an athlete? Yeah, it, it's, it's given me a whole new appreciation into what it takes to put together an Australian Olympic team. Uh, putting together an Australian Olympic team in normal times is a huge undertaking, but the amount of work that has been put into this campaign by everyone at the AOC has honestly been monumental. And I think that I appreciate so much more the opportunities that I get as an athlete because I can see how much work has been put into the back end of that. And I, I think that that's an important thing for athletes to recognise as well. Uh, we tend to complain about all the things that go wrong and we don't know about all the things that did go wrong and got fixed before we got here. Well, all, all the things that just go right to begin with. Um, but talk about Tokyo because coming in, I guess, nobody really knew what to expect. And how would you compare it to your previous Olympic experiences? I think every Olympic experience is unique. Uh, 
because it, it, it's kind of shaped by the culture of the country that you are in. Uh, but this game's obviously, there are very, very many layers too. And I think that this has been one of the most uh, cohesive Australian teams that I've been a part of in a long time. And I think that there are a couple of elements to that. I think that the setup that the AOC has done at Australian headquarters is unparalleled. And it is honestly the envy of the world. And, and the way that they have put athlete performance first and foremost in every decision that they have made has really shone through. But then they've also thought about athletes interacting and having a good times a good time at these games uh, where we wouldn't be able to go out and enjoy a lot of the things that the Olympics usually offer and I would say also that everyone has gone through a similar struggle to get to this point you know I think adversity creates cohesion and everyone has gone through something COVID related and there's something about that that's really unifying. That's really interesting because we know that some of the previous Olympic Games there have been issues um, I suppose at times the the swimming team if they do well the rest of the team seems to do well but the swimming team hasn't lived up to expectations in the past couple of games and you talking about that cohesion is that because like you say the world has gone through a pandemic it's something bigger than us and sometimes when we realize that out there there are bigger things going on and we're not so consumed with ourselves is is that one of the elements do you think yeah, the, the world is bigger than sport, which is ironic saying that at one of the biggest sporting events in the world. Uh, but, but I think that uh, the success of the swim team has been building for a few years now. If you look back at, at some of the results that, that we've had in the lead into these games, you'll see that there's been a momentum building. This, this didn't happen overnight. This didn't happen in the year off of 2020. This has been in the working for a long time. And I'm lucky enough to be on the athlete leadership group and we have made culture uh, really front and center of our agenda. And I think- Since London, right? Since, since London, and, and you can gradually see that. And I think that uh, with, with every change, you, you have to have patience. It's, we're not going to see results overnight, um, but it has really paid dividends. And, and I really hope that we've managed to create a bit of a legacy that we can hand on to future generations uh, of Australian swimmers. And the pool? A week ago already I mean it seems you know it, it sort of takes forever to get here and then suddenly it's just gone um, what are you going to take away with you and is it too early to talk about what's next for you and 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 if you know I mean Paris is only three years away but what will you take away from the pool experience this time around I think I'm gonna take away the joy that everyone took in other people's performances uh, and again, that really speaks to the culture of the team that we've built. Yes, it is an individual sport. Yes, we train in all different parts of Australia. We have different coaches and we do different events. But I think this time there was a real collective sense of achievement that someone else's success was in a, in a tiny way your success as well. And that someone else's performance or how, how good they do doesn't negatively impact on on yourself we were all valued equally as members of the Australian swim team and uh, you know I, I can think of so many moments just just little ones at, at, at the swimming pool probably the, the thing that sticks with me the most is is after that medley relay uh, on the last night the whole Australian swim team stayed behind and waited for all four of us girls to finish our media and they uh, did a little victory tunnel as we came back to the warm down pool and we came and we ran through the whole team and and none of them left none of them went to go to the dining hall or, or do any of the things that they wanted to do they wanted to be there and celebrate with us new zealand weightlifter laurel hubbard has had more attention placed on her than most athletes here at the olympic games as the first transgender woman to compete at an Olympics, the weightlifter has made history. Hubbard is now retiring from the sport. She sat down with some members of the media, including the ABC, after her event, where she was asked how she'll look back on her historic Olympic appearance in the years to come. I suppose um, 
but I hope is, if I am in a position to look back, that um, this will just be um, a small part of history, just a small step. Um, I know that uh, we often look at history in terms of singular events, but really I think it's a continuum. It is you know, a product of so many uncountable lives and experiences and um, um, I really hope that, uh, you know, with time, um, any significance to this occasion is diminished by events to come. All I've ever really wanted as an athlete is just to be regarded as an athlete. And I suppose the thing I've been so grateful for here in Tokyo is uh, just being given those opportunities to just go through life as any other athlete would, and, uh, and that's really what I take from this. We all know that winners at the Olympics are celebrated, but what about for the majority of athletes that don't achieve their dreams and that go home from this event disappointed? Amin El Amri is from Le Matin Medio in Morocco. I spoke to him about the incredible highs and lows that the Olympics throws up. Well, I, I think that the, um, the level of the competition, I mean, when you're passionate about sports, uh, this is the this, the sky high of the competition, so you can't go above Olympics. I mean, world championships, yeah, maybe for the athletics it's every two years, but the Olympics is every four years. And there's nothing in the world, not, not an event that can, you know, gather all these people. And this is what makes it so, so magic, so magical. Mm. And uh, I, I think there's the magic of, of the Olympics, is the fact that the world uh, comes together and stays together for three, maybe four weeks sometimes. And especially in the middle of a pandemic, you know. Uh, but the hardest part is seeing them, you know, failing, uh, trying to go to, to medals and it is really hard. Uh, I mean, when you watch it from back home, uh, yeah, it's, y y you watch the thing, uh, you switch off the TV and then it's it's your life you go on with your life but here uh, you watch the thing you go to the mix zone and you see the tears the disappointment uh, yeah it, it's it's even harder it's even harder I can't imagine uh, an athlete preparing for four years for an Olympics and then getting there and getting kicked in the first round it's it's so frustrating even for us media who are covering, I mean, I can't imagine what, what it feels like for an athlete. And that, that you make a very good point because a lot of the coverage that we watch and we see is the celebration of the high moments. And we don't see that most people that come to the Olympics, that's not going to be their experience. Yeah, I know. I mean, if we, if we would take um, an example in swimming, for example, or athletics, it's a tenth of a second. Mm -hmm. It's a matter of tenth of a second. I mean. Tenth of a second, you could be on the podium bragging about your medal. And tenth of a second late, and you'll be in hell because you've been preparing your whole life sometimes for this event and not getting on the podium, not getting a medal. It's, it's a huge disappointment. I mean, uh, I can speak about Asman Young, who is a judoka from Morocco. Uh, she spent 10 years being a firefighter. She, she laid down all of, all of her professional career to do judo. And now after 10 years of doing judo, she had the chance. She actually had the real good chance. But she, got, uh, she lost in the first round. So there was a mix of disappointment, frustration, uh, not being able to look forward. It's, it's, it's actually uh, the bad side of the Olympics mm. and nobody really speaks about that. Mm. It's, it's really hard. Actually, Olympics can be wonderful, magical for all the guys and the, and the girls winning, but it can, it can be really cruel for all the, the others. And that's all this week from Tokyo. I'm Tracy Holmes. See you next week.